I would like to start with uh, two quotes here, which have been guiding me throughout my journey, which I'm going to take you through a glimpse of it. One is, um, it's by national leader Gandhiji. I'm sure uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, all of you would have heard about him. So he said, you know, all of us on this earth, earth has enough to provide for everyone's needs. But earth has nothing to provide even for a single person's greed. Now, greed has no bounds. So even one earth is not sufficient to provide for one man's greed. So I think it's very important how we pursue the resources on this planet and really look at our needs and uh, how we optimize our own needs. Because we can keep on designing efficient and effective systems. But if people still remain greedy, the systems will never be able to cater to us. So it's very important to uh, look at a person and how he or she thinks and pursue resources. So now that brings me to the uh, second quote, uh, which has inspired my journey, which is be the change that you would like to see. So uh, we all want to build a sustainable environment. We want to save the planet. Actually, it's more of saving us and not really the planet. The planet has got a billion years timeline and it really doesn't matter. It's, it's more to save our own existence and make our lives uh, more comfortable here on the planet. So for that, I need to be the change. So I want to see people taking actions uh, towards building sustainable development, building sustainable systems. But what am I willing to do? Am I willing to step out of my comfort zone? Am I willing to switch off that AC? And you know, try and stay in that regular temperature uh, so that I am not uh, unnecessarily consume certain resources. So am I willing to make certain sacrifices? Am I willing to be the change? And this is where I am going to quickly speak about the journey which I have undertaken. So recently, um, about a month back, I have taken a sabbatical leave from my job. So I'm on a one-year leave. And I am cycling across, along the borders of uh, India. So this is about uh, 20,000 kilometers, maybe a little more uh, of cycling. And I am cycling for the cause of uh, climate change. So the mission that I'm carrying is change before climate change. So I need to change myself as a person before the climate changes. Uh, actually, the climate has already changed, but... Uh, I still want to be a little optimistic and make this a warning and not. So that, that's the whole idea. So what you see here in the slide are a few glimpses of my cycling trip over the past uh, one month, uh, where I have uh, cycled across the borders of a state called as Gujarat. Uh, and now I'll continue my journey towards south starting, I think, 23rd Jan. Uh, sorry, 23rd of February. Yeah, so this 23rd of this month. So en route, I... Uh, I'm connecting with a lot of people. I speak to students. I speak to communities. I speak to anyone, you know, about these issues of climate change. And a few things which I'm going to share are my learnings. So when we say world a better place, it's about these five elements, uh, which you know, we talk about earth, fire, space, water, right? Uh, th th these are the things that these, these elements is what, makes this earth and everything else in this universe and these there is a beautiful dance of, of these elements which actually make up everything that we have around us and what's happening is we're actually polluting these elements you know so uh, and who's polluting it's we the people right and, and what do we what are we polluted for we are polluting these for so-called profit right uh what do we, how do we define profit? So uh, these are a few points I want to try and touch upon. 20 minutes is too short a time. And this could be a you know, full course that I can, 30 hours course that I can teach in the university. But we'll just try and touch upon these uh, points during these uh, this small discussion, at least to provoke some thought process. So, you know, actually, before I even come here, let, let me just take you through this picture I have. Okay. Uh, this 
picture that you see, okay, this is a river. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you can see the cursor. Let me try and uh, do this. Uh, well, pointer options, laser pointer. Okay, so do you, I'm sure you can see this laser pointer, right? Yeah, so this part is a river. Okay, and this part is a sea. It's, it's Arabian Sea. Okay, so and this picture is at this uh, point that you see the red mark on the map. Yeah, so this is just a little below the state of Gujarat, and I was just here about a week back. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing you this picture is, so when I was, this place is called as Daman, D-A-M-A-N, and it's an island, okay? Uh, uh, just, it's a part of the Gujarat, Union Territory. So when I went to this island, I was cycling, I cycled to this island, and uh, I was just standing on a bridge where you can actually see this river merging with the, uh, um, with, with, with the sea, with the Arabian Sea. And for me, it was, it had a very philosophical significance uh, or a spiritual significance where you, know, you talk about the river meeting the ocean. You know? So it was very beautiful. I was quite enjoying the whole site. And, and I clicked the snap and I have uh, these group of friends, about 100 of them who are interested in the, my journey. So I have a small WhatsApp group, you know, where I keep posting pictures and uh, where am I and all, all those things. So I posted this picture there. So one of my school friends, uh, he had a thought. He said, see, one of the things uh, that we're fa facing shortage of is water, fresh water. You know, we have only limited fresh water. So he asked a question in the group saying that, okay, now here there's a river merging in an ocean. What if we stop all the rivers from flowing into the sea? We'll have enough fresh water. That, that was his question. Probably sounds logical, right? So we, we had some you know, discussion around this in our group. And when I started doing research, in fact, this is from one of the Australian scientists. So what he said is, why can't we pump rivers, water, river water before it reaches the ocean? The reason is stopping rivers from reaching the ocean causes enormous damage to the coastal ecosystem. The rivers don't flow to the ocean. We lose a great deal of biodiversity, beauty, natural uh, anonymity, and cultural values associated with the coastal reef. Many fisheries depend on the rivers to flow in the ocean. If you stop that flow, the fisheries will die. The rivers don't flow to the ocean. They don't clear the pollutants, salt, or excess nutrients. This accumulates over a period of time. And this actually, I think they had attempted somewhere in Australia. I don't have a reference right now. But they said when Australia's largest river system stopped flowing to the ocean for a few years, I think this was in a place called as Kurung, uh, Kurong, C O O R O N G. I'm not sure if I spelled it right. They, uh, they tried it. And the salinity of that uh, seawater increased five times. And the fresh water. Uh, had problems. It was in great, great danger. It became acidic, you know. So there was a lot, of, and there are a lot of things. Actually, he goes on mentioning so many issues that they started facing when they actually stopped the one of the largest rivers flowing into the ocean, right? And then they realized, oh, you can't do that. So the the solution might seem right, but to save fresh water, I just block the river flowing in the ocean, and then I'm fine. Maybe it seems logical. But when you actually do it, the amount of other things which happen, it, it could result into a big catastrophe, right? We think like this because we don't understand the interconnectedness of the entire ecosystem. You just look at a small part and you think, okay, let me try and manipulate this variable, okay? Without thinking of all the other variables. And there are like millions of variables in nature and all of them are interconnected. You can't just take one or two or a few in isolation, manipulate them and get the result that we want. And that's exactly the issue that we, the people, uh, are creating right now. We have very limited understanding of the nature. We take a few variables and we try and manipulate and then create a whole mess which we see around us, right? Which is triggering climate change. So there are these five elements and we are polluting the earth, deforesting, right? We inducing chemicals. 
uh, we are polluting the water, releasing all the toxic elements in the system. Uh, there's a lot of things which are happening, right? Uh, I'm probably sounding too negative, but that's exactly what's happening around us. And we choose conveniently not to look at it. It's an inconvenient truth, like Al Gore says. There's a whole documentary by Al Gore. So it's important that we try and not unnecessarily manipulate these variables. Now, see what happens is, uh, see if you look at this slide, we have profit, people, and planet, and it has to be equitable, right? But all these corporations say, okay, no problems. We will try and make a little more profit. We will try and take care of the people also, and also the planet. But actually, as a matter of fact, unfortunately, what's happening is the profits are soaring very high, right? I mean, we know the tune to which the CEOs of the big companies get paid, exorbitant amounts, right? The people are not really taken care of, and planet is down underground. And this is exactly where we are right now. So to tackle this one, of course, as uh, no, Philania, you, you told me, said you, that you, feel, you of course have to have efficient systems, right? But also we need to change as people, our attitude towards consumption, right? Our entire economy is based on a consumerist attitude. You consume more, uh, you know, you have those funny indicators like GDP goes high and, uh, well, but in the process, you would have actually butchered the planet. No. So uh, I've just borrowed this from the Maslow's theory of, uh, so what do we need? As people, what do we need? We need, um, we have our psychological needs, we have safety needs, belonging, uh, love, self-esteem, self-actualization. This is what we want, right? So here, if we have a system where we believe in exchange, we believe in barter. Yeah, we uh, support ourselves as a community, right? Like for example, you know, I just come to uh, Russia and uh, I probably, you know, I have uh, uh, Folina hosting me, right? Uh, in fact, a lot of people are hosting me on my trips, right? So now here, uh, and then I reciprocate the same when she comes to India, right? Now what happens is here, uh, I have got what I want. I went to Russia. I had some work, or I had to go around, and then you know, and then it's the same. Uh, Philana wanted. She came to India, and then you know, so I kind of took care of her. Now in this process, what happened was, uh, we both got what what we wanted, right? Because we're friends. Uh, there's mutual trust, and uh, we both got what we wanted. But in the process, government didn't earn anything because I didn't go to Russia and book a hotel, or she didn't come to India and book a hotel, right? The moment you book a hotel, government earns. But if you don't, government doesn't earn, right? And then government earns, the GDP goes up. Now, in this transaction, we both got what we wanted because we have mutual friendship and trust. But uh, the government didn't earn, and hence the GDP don't go up. So GDP is actually uh, a wrong indicator. You know, it probably if the GDP is very high, there's very little trust in the economy. Okay, that, that's that's my theory. But so, but if we start really exchanging and uh, not bothered about the GDP. Uh, we, we start being more friends, more empathetic, you know, more learning, get a little more creative with the solutions. It is possible, you know, that you don't have to unnecessarily exploit nature and exploit resources to uh, achieve what we want, right? So just, just uh, stop buying unnecessary utilities. You know, each time there's a new fashion trend, you just want to go and buy these clothes. No, in fact, you know, I was speaking to a, a, a bunch of children in one of the schools in a place called Jamnagar again in Gujarat, just a few weeks back during my cycling trip. So, you know, what happens is normally when you're cycling alone, people are in you know, awe, and uh, then you just capitalize on that, get their attention, and speak to them about climate change. So, I had, uh, we were speaking about excessive consumption. I was speaking to this uh, eighth standard uh, class, where girls and boys. So uh, when I said you should avoid excessive consumption, uh, this eight standard girl towards the end of my session, she came with a confession in the front of the whole class. She said, you know, every birthday I buy a new dress. I rather I force my parents to buy me a new dress. And is it okay? <laughs> so I said, no, it's not okay because you're buying something which you don't need. You're just buying a heck of it. And uh, she probably went with the realization that yeah, she needs to change something in her life. You know, so it is important that. Uh, 
we, we, we really figure out what our needs are and cater to them or not get in that whole rat race of excessive consumption. So, you know, what happens is all our um, efforts as corporations, I've been a part of corporation for a long time. I am a professor at a business management school. And uh, this is exactly what we teach, you know, making money for your stakeholders. Uh, in fact, when even when I started doing my MBA, Master's in Business, business Administration degree, our uh, business ethics professor came in the class and his opening statement was, business of business is to make money. <laughs> so, but then yes, uh, we make money for the business. The stakeholders make money. But then you end up destroying the planet in the process. So I think we need to have a much holistic view when we are trying to make money right? We need to factor in the cost of the environment. Like for example, see when you price petroleum products, uh, how do you decide the cost of petroleum or the petrol or a diesel, uh, the fuel that you buy? There are some agencies which decide based on certain parameters, right? Have you ever calculated the cost that the mother earth pays to uh, you know, that that uh, when you extract that product and release those emissions in the... I, I don't think those costs are uh, factored in anywhere, right? It's, it's purely money game, right? So you need to have more holistic, more inclusive view when you are uh, talking about economy. That, that's very, very important. So when you're making profit, what, at what cost is it coming at? You know, so... Uh, that, that's that's so petroleum is just one of the examples I just gave. It, it's for all kinds of resources that uh, we need to think of. So when we're doing this, it's very important that you know we are in all in, in this together. We are all in the same boat. Uh, we we have to embrace this change together. It's not that oh okay I am going to sit and preach and uh, let some somebody else do it and get out of their air conditioning and stop using their cars and uh, start using public transport. And I'm going to still continue using my Mercedes. I'm still going to, I mean, uh, some, some gas guzzling uh, on transport, right? And, and, and that's where uh, even my own journey started. I said, let me try my best to be the change. So I'm going to spend next one year on my bicycle traveling across the country with uh, about, I currently had three bags, probably now it's gonna become uh, five bags, right? Uh, where I have my basic medicines, basic clothes, um, uh, some some uh, cameras, and my, that's one of my major expenses actually, to capture the journey basically, so I can show it to the people, you know? Uh, and maybe come up with a small document towards the end of it. So is these few things I'm gonna just move around and that, that's more than sufficient for me for one year, so kind of demonstrate it through my own actions, and again, you know, uh, uh, try and be the change instead of just preaching. So, so we have to embrace this change together, get out of our comfort zones, really look at what we really need, and uh, are we really getting to excessive consumption? So, ask these tough questions to ourselves, and try and adapt our minimalistic uh, lifestyles. Of course, that's not good for GDP, but that's definitely good for the planet, right? Uh, of course, at more of a corporate level, national level, you need to have renewable energy profit, uh, policies, resource efficiency, where uh, which which um, uh, Folina uh, you, you talked about, you know, uh, in the context of uh, architecture and construction, right? And of course, one thing that you really highlighted, and we have to keep reiterating, is the circular economy principle. In fact, when I cycle, um, I try and use my cycle as a symbol, where the two wheels of my bicycle are. The, they represent circular economy, you know. So it's just more of uh, a symbolism, right? So uh, that's that's what I really that, that that's what will help all of us in long term. Else we have a problem. So uh, well, these are a few points I just wanted to make um, and uh, uh, share a few of my learnings and uh, some insights that I've gained through my cycling journey. And uh, well, I would like to conclude and I'm open for questions. Thank you.